Look, I built a new desk in the studio. It's a bit higher, it's bolted to the wall. So yeah, let's uh, shoot a video on this setup. And I also have a new light here and a new light there. And this light is quite special. Let me show you. It has colors and RGB and it has all kinds of colors as you can see. Just turn the wheel here. So yeah, I love this light. But let's put it back to daylight color balance otherwise this video will be really weird. Because we're gonna talk about this quantum 3D system. So welcome by Retro Machines, my name is Victor Bart. <laughs> So last week I picked up two Quantum 3D Alt GMI systems. Uh, one is uh, complete like this, the other one is more of a project. So we're gonna take a look on this machine right now. And here we have the front panel with a dust filter, LGMI 8264, but that card is not in here, there's an 8232 uh, in it. Uh, all kinds of Cool stickers, very old looking LEDs. I had this style in my 286. Here we have the drive cover. And if we open it here, you can see we have a floppy drive, we have a uh, CD ROM player from Sony, and a hot swappable IDE rack. But this hot swappable IDE rack has problems because ATA3386 mix up. So I probably gonna use Scusi in this system. Here we have the reset button and the power button and the chassis is a 4U rack mount unit. And the handles here are a little bit bent so I need to repair that. So if we take a look at the side we have holes here for a rack mount kit but I don't have a rack mount kit so if anyone has like a universal rack mount kit, something that will work on here, please let me know. Or if you have a link to a universal kit that works in here, I really want to have it like on drawers for in my rack. And here on the chassis there's a little bit of a dent, so I need to repair that. So on the back we have the power supply, PS2, uh, 100 Mbit Ethernet. USB ports, COM ports, parallel port and a sound uh, card on board. The HCP card right now is missing, but we have the slot covers here with all the holes for the airflow. And here we have the special Quantum 3D card with uh, like 8 chips from the Voodoo 5. And these Ethernet ports are to daisy chain multiply chassis, but I don't know how it works. And we have a VGA port on this card, it works like a Voodoo 2. But it doesn't have a pass through possibility, so I need to have two monitors if I run uh, with this chassis and I want to have the 3D support of this card. On the drive cover panel we have this big sticker with the Quantum 3D logo, the 3DFX logo and the Intel Pentium 3 case beds. Here on the top cover we have a nice Quantum 3D logo, uh, big warning stickers, I really love that from this chassis. So let's uh, open it and see what's inside. There's really nice hardware in this chassis. We have two Intel Pentium 3 slot 1 CPUs and I think they were 933 MHz with the Intel stock coolers. And that is fine because we have two big metal 12 cm fans in the front so we have a lot of airflow through this system and that's also needed with this card. We have a huge power supply and in my previous video you can see the details of it because it is like two power supplies in one. Uh, one side is for the motherboard and the other side of the power supply is for the video card. And we have some really big cables here to uh, power the video card. This aluminium tunnel with an extra fan is for the cooling of this card. Because this will run really hot with the 8 VSA100 chips. I looked on YouTube to see if there were any videos online about this system and about the hardware. And the only videos I could find were like the demos of the software running on this card. So yeah, that's a little bit disappointing. I hope this video will make it way more clear and I'm not an expert of this machine. 
So I'm still learning and collecting information and asking my friends for tips and tricks. This will be a big journey to get uh, the systems up and running and to make the configs really nice. But I think that is really cool to make videos about. And here we have the Quantum 3D video card and this is the AT232. But the card numbering is a little bit different because on this power board it says Quantum 3D Audio My 8184 power board. So the power board is uh, generic but the card behind it is noted by this sticker. So that can be a little bit confusing if you can only read this in an advertisement. So really pay attention online if you would buy a card like this if it's the correct one that you are buying. So I gonna remove this card now because I want to test things out with more memory and stuff like that and do long mem test and I think it's better to remove this card uh, till the base system is up and running and then install the card uh, so we can't damage it and you can't really run this system without a cover because then your card can overheat and break down. So let's remove the card and see what kind of motherboard we have. And as you can see we have really big power connectors and really big cables. The orange cables is for 3.3 volt to the card and the grey and the white one is for 2.9 volt to the card. The card takes up 4 slots but only in a single bracket in the back. So here we have a closer look on the card and yes this sticker says do not lick and they are probably right because the 2.9 volt is 75 amps and the 3.3 is 30 amps from the power supply. So yeah do not lick this. And here we have of course the big power connectors and these are big power lines to the board so this only in distribution board. And the power passes through from this card to this card by this uh, standoffs. And here you can see the 8 VSA 100 chips. And this uh, card has 32 megabytes per chip. Just like the Voodoo 5 has. And the 64 version of this card has 64 megabytes of memory per chip. So here you have a close up on the 8164 power board. And here with the sticker that is an 8232. These connectors here are for SLI, so you can run two of those cards together with the same power board uh, in an SLI configuration to have 16 VSA100 chips. And probably if I find another 8232 board and make the pins between them, I can uh, make the config like this, because the card will then stay in this position and this will move a little bit. But that uh, fits in and make sure you run it with this protected shield because it protects your hardware and helps with the airflow. And here the aluminium is a little bit bent so maybe I need to repair this or just leave it as it is. And here on the other side of the board you see also the SLI uh, pins. The card is 32 bit PCI and here we have a hint uh, chip and that is a PCI bridge. Uh, to have so many chips uh, running at the same time. Here we have the SLI bridge on the other side of the card and here a look on the VGA ports and the Ethernet ports for the pass-through. But it is probably not Ethernet but it is RJ45. And also here on the board it says 8164 which makes it really confusing what kind of card it is. So make sure you know what you buy if you're gonna buy cards like this. So let's put the card away for now. So let's store the card in here together with my 8132 and this is an 8232 and I will make a separate video one day what the difference is between the cards because they look very similar. Let's take a closer look on the motherboard because I think this is one of the most epic Pentium 3 motherboards there is. It has everything you need. 
So we have an HP Pro slot. We have 64-bit uh, 33MHz PC uh, slots, 1, 2, 3 and 4. We have two 64-bit 66MHz PCI slots and even an ISA slot on a high-end Pentium 3 motherboard. That's really epic. So if I want to run like an AWE64 cold, I can do it in here. That makes it really epic. Of course, two slot one CPUs. Uh, let's see what kind of chipset uh, it's hidden here. Probably a server works or something. We have sound on board here, but the audio chip is here. So probably not the best sound with all the interference of this eight layer motherboard and all the lanes going on. Here we have an Ethernet port of course with the Intel chip here. And we have eight memory banks and that's kind of special for a Pentium 3 platform. Here we have an LSI SCSI chip. It's an uh, U2W. We have two 68 pin uh, SCSI ports here on the motherboard. Right now the system has a hot swappable IDE rack with shitty cables because this is not an ETA 66 or ETA 100 cable, so it has IDE problems. So I cannot turn this system into a SCSI build with SCSI hard drive. Probably still the IDE CD-ROM player, just because it's just a CD-ROM player. Or maybe I cannot turn one into a SCSI CD-ROM player instead of an IDE, but not sure yet. We have two memory sticks now installed from Corsair PC133 ECC registered. And I think this is 128 megabyte per stick. So I'm gonna upgrade that of course. To the motherboard we only have a 20 pin ATX connector. There are two ports but there are only one in use. And the caps on this motherboard look okay. And if I run into problems with this board I will just let it recap. Let's power up the system and we need a video card. And I got this Nvidia Fanta something with uh, the system. And the seller said it was the original card. But there's not much information online about these systems. I'm not 100% sure if this is the original card. But this is so low end that I probably gonna end up with a card of my own choice. Because there are much nicer cards than this. But let's install it in the system so we have a display if we boot it up. Pentium 3 933, 256 MB of memory. Operating system not found, but no errors, that's a good sign. And this system is not a silent system. And we have 60 MB of memory on the video card. F2 to enter the BIOS. Front side bus 133, floppy drive installed. Memory 255. Standard BIOS stuff, nothing special. I gonna dive in the BIOS another time, but probably not on video. Oh, Nvidia Fanta indeed. The motherboard is a Tyan Thunder 2500. And it is an uh, S1867. So let's upgrade the system. I went to uh, Dave uh, yesterday and I got some parts from him. That's always nice to share around some parts with each other. So let's just see what's in this box. Because not everything is for this system. But there is some interesting stuff here. Like coax cables. So yeah, I gonna do something with a coax network in a video. And there are a lot of cables, so thank you, Dave. And also, I have four coax terminators, which is very important if you run a coax network. I had enough T uh, splitters, so now I have enough parts to run a coax network. So, what else we have? Matrox M3D. And this is a power VR card with 4 MB and this is like a competitor to the Fudu 1. But the Fudu 1 was much more popular than the NEC power VR but now I have a card to test out and the drivers. I have one in box sealed up but now I first can try out how that works and then later probably break the seals of that other one and try that card out and see the experience. But nice to have an M3D. Also, I got a SCSI hard drive, Cheetah 15K, 36 gigabyte. 
another 36 gigabyte another 36 gigabyte all 15,000 rpm uh, another cheetah 36 36 more uh, 15,000 rpm 36 and another one so I now have 7 36 gigabyte 15,000 rpm SCAD hot pluggable hard drives so that's always nice and probably perfect for a system like this also we found this CD-ROM player from NAC but this is a 50 pin SCSI drive and it is from August 1998 so it's probably 32 speed or something so if I want to turn one of those systems in full SCSI this is the drive to use but now comes the most important stuff that's in this bag and in this bag here we have 512 megabyte PC133 modules from A-Pacer, Asus Sega Custard. So I have 8 memory banks in here and 12 sticks so I can see uh, if everything runs fine and if there's a broken stick I can make a complete set. So let's upgrade this system to like 4 gigabyte of memory. The system supports 8 gigabyte of memory. But it is still a 32-bit system, so 8 gigabytes of memory is a big hassle with PAE and stuff like that. And then some drivers won't work and 4 gigabytes is way more than enough for a Windows 2000 system. And what's really nice about this motherboard, it's running dual channel memory. So you need to have uh, per two sticks in the system for maximum performance. So I'm going to use a Pacer memory, 512 MB, registered ECPC EC, PC133, cost 3. Okay, perfect. One gigabyte of memory installed. So now let's install the rest of the memory and see if it uh, detects all the four gigabytes of memory. All the memory is installed but here this bracket is not really on the right spot so it was a little bit tight here but let's try it out. That will take a while so let's speed up the video. And we have 4 gigabyte memory installed. Perfect. So let's run a mem test and of course I couldn't find my ultimate boot today so I burned Another ultimate boot CD and I think this is like the 8th ultimate boot CD that I burned. So this will probably take a while. We have two CPUs, 933 MHz, 517 MB per second memory speed. So I hope you now have a better understanding about the hardware in this system. There's not much online about this system so any link, any info that you find Please link it below so we can document the system and save all the information about the Quantum 3D systems. So thanks for watching, please like and share this video, subscribe and leave a comment and you can join Retro Machines and the 3DFX Fudu user group on Facebook and support me monthly on Patreon so I can buy systems like this or support me by using my Amazon affiliated links and follow me on Twitter. Ah, hello ladies. It's good to see you. Do you think that perhaps I could have a crowbar of my own? Gordon, I'm very concerned about these electrical force field barriers. What will happen if we have a power outage? Have you ever seen such a magnificent species? Don't you find this all rather fascinating?